Hey everybody, this is Lori and this is my co-host Leah and this is Inclusivity Podcast and this is an extension of a podcast that I've had in the past called Inclusive Talks Sustainability and the podcast is has the same theme but a different format and a different look and so the theme is inclusive sustainability meaning living a life that is inclusive and sustainable. And for us, sustainable means supporting social and environmental justice, fighting yeah. for the rights of everyone, because we fully believe that to create a sustainable future, everybody has to be taken care of and respected and the rights of the earth as well have to be respected. So that's sort of the theme of the podcast. Um, I'm really excited that we have uh, you can see behind us, we have Black Iowa News and Alliance for Sustainability. Those are really our partners in the podcast. And our friend Dana, who is the founder of Black Iowa News, will sometimes join us for the podcast and will sometimes do interviews herself. So we're very, very excited about that. We also are partnering with our Facebook group, which is also called Inclusivity, but it's called Inclusivity with a T-E-A, Collaborative. And they, on the Facebook group, which is run by my sister, will be sharing stories about sustainable living and about amazing people who are making the world better. And sometimes Bobby, my sister, will come on the podcast. Sometimes we will you know, show up on the group with her. And so our goal is to create this collaborative, wonderful space where we can talk about the things that matter as we create a future for everybody. And again, this is my co-host, my new co-host, Leah. And Leah, I would love it if you would just introduce yourself a little bit, tell us um, a little bit about you, and then I want to ask you a couple of questions. Um, I went back and forth on how do you introduce yourself, because we come in so many different spaces. So first, my name is Leah Williams. It's not pronounced Lia. It's spelled L-Y-A. That unique name came from my mom, who sought that name biblically in the Bible, but didn't like the spelling. I am from North Carolina, born and raised in Winston-Salem, uh, attended college at North Carolina a and State University in Greensboro, North Carolina, which is where I majored in agricultural and biosystems engineering. Upon graduation, moved to the Maryland area, working for USDA, Natural Resources Conservation Service. And two years in, hopefully I'll get a chance to tell more of this story, um, chose to move here to Iowa. Came to Iowa to work as a civil engineer with USDA NRCS designing dams or known as flood retarding structures. Um, so moved here at the ripe age of 25 and planted roots. I've met my husband who was also a native of North Carolina, but did not meet him until I moved here. And then we have a beautiful little boy named Amir. Um, he's nine years old, full of energy. And he, you know, this past Mother's Day is like, all I could tell him was he is always my biggest presence. Um, I am one of four children. So I have one older brother who is deceased, um, did not get a chance to meet my son. I um, was pregnant with him actually when we lost him. Then I have a sister and I have a younger brother and they are all in North Carolina. So it's just me and my husband and my son are the natives of North Carolina technically living here in Iowa. Um, I have a passion for um, all things and this opportunity to be on inclusivity has been one of them because I kept saying that once I stopped in my career uh, as an engineer, I kept asking because my faith was God's got to have something else for me that's a purpose. And I kept wondering, and each time I've done it, I've gotten into more new uh, ventures that have been exciting in there. Um, it's like, it's, it's, I've been afraid to do them, but once I got into it, it's like, this is what makes sense. Um, what else could I share? I'm not sure, because I definitely can talk, <laughs> which is what I am known for. <laughs> so I wanna, as I, you know, I introduced the new podcast called Inclusivity, and I just wanna say that you know, Lee and I decided, and Dana decided on this name because we want you to be able to listen to the podcast, which is going to be about 15 minutes long, and drink a cup of tea. 
and I've had my two cups already of coffee. So I have tea, <laughs> but I love coffee and I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. But yes, the inclusivity part um, in my other passions, that's something I've been working a lot with is dealing with how can I make my community more inclusive um, when it comes to the lens of equity and anti-racism. And so this makes sense to be a part of something that is discussing inclusivity, is talking about how to have sustainable living, which in my agriculture engineering background, sustainable agriculture comes to mind. And a lot of people I feel like don't see sometimes how that intertwines because we want to keep having our resources available to have sustainability. And if we're not all as people figuring out how do we work together to bridge those gaps, we're kind of just going in a circle here. So yes, um, I agree. Leah, how was it moving to Iowa? Moving to Iowa was a challenge. Um, my career in NRCS was not easy. I was the only Black female engineer. And coming from a community that was predominantly Black, and then moving into an area that even though I was in Maryland and it has a population of a Black community, there was not me in there. Ag engineering, when it comes to Black women, is very low. Um, at the time, I would say it was probably like I was one of five Black female engineers for the entire United States. So getting here to Iowa was like even more of a shocker. I had no idea about the weather. I had no idea about um, how it was to live in the Midwest because I've grown up on the East Coast. Um, and I would say I got stuck pretty much on the weather. Uh, when I got here, for instance, the sky was like, gray and cast and I was like what did I do because the house hunting trip I had uh, did not allow me to explore it was like I was here to look for a place to live but not getting here and saying I don't know about this because if you don't have a family then you next thing you start looking for is the community of people you can identify with to help grow and that was hard um, if you're not getting in some kind of circle of friends or someone is inviting you in the inclusion, um, it was a challenge. So being 25, single, <laughs> all I had at the time was myself and I had a little pet. Um, his name was Shadow. That was all the company I had at the time. And I had to rely heavily on um, my, the people I work with. And when you're coming in as a young Black woman from the East Coast and you're used to being direct, that's not Midwestern or way. Um, it was a challenge to like, you know, how do you break that? How do I help people to realize I don't check a box? I was breaking barriers for people to not cast me as coming from a broken home, um, using food stamps. You know, I'm Southern and I'm not slow. Very much quick with it. I'm always like thinking 10 steps ahead of people. And I'm often told, that because I think and process so much quicker, I get frustrated with others are not following along with me quick enough at times. Yeah. Or I know that sometimes it creates, you know, misunderstanding. But I want to say, I hope that I, the question that I answered, Lori. <laughs> no, I think that was great. And I, I think that a couple of things I want to say there. One is that we are going to have a, a longer interview with Leah. So anyone who's interested in learning more about Leah's story, we're going to have a secondary, probably half hour to an hour long talk between the two of us, where Leah just tells her whole story. Our goal today is to keep it shorter, but I liked your answer very much. And I think it really talks to the whole goal of our podcast and our uh, Facebook group is to create a community and to make people feel welcome and to include everyone. And so I think that your experience when you move to Iowa really speaks to that and our need for that, our need to have a place where we can share our ideas about creating a future and about creating the world we want. And that is exactly what we want here. And part of the reason that I brought Dana and Leah on is that I knew that my voice was not enough that it needed to be broader than I can possibly be as a white woman living in Minnesota. So I wanted to inc increase that, 
the voice of the podcast by bringing on people who might experience things differently than I do and speak differently than I do and have different background experiences. So I thank you for that because that I think is perfect. One thing that I definitely wanted to cover today is for you, if you could in kind of a nutshell, say what you would like people to take away from each episode of our podcast. Can you explain sort of what your goal would be for that? Well, my goal first would be when you're in a group of people and everyone looks like you, how are you really learning how to evolve? When, when your first thing, something that has been recently happened, um, students at, um, in a Waukee district recently said Ill- illegal immigrants should go away. Well, if your whole circle is, let's just say for, a, <laughs> I'm very transparent or candid, Say if your whole circle looks like you and you happen to be a a white person, how are you making it better when you don't have another lens to offer a voice? So I see this podcast as being a way of bridging gaps that are not normally there, showing where inclusion can exist, showing other young women like myself currently that you don't have to be stuck in whatever label that is given. I started off as a agricultural engineer, civil engineer by title, and I became a mom and I chose stay-at-home moms. And I think a lot of times there's so miscon- many misconceptions about how we spend our time and how we should spend our time. Um, I know prior for me, I felt like a uh, stay-at-home mom had all this time. There's no reason why their house shouldn't be spotless and their kids should be spotless. And once I got into it, I'm like, wow. You know, I began to tell my husband, like, listen, you know, if I had to add up everything I did, I think I would be making at least six figures. And there's not enough money to cover all the roles that I facilitated at one glance. So I would want our listeners to find out what is it they think is inclusivity means and what does it mean for themselves and how can they be like you Lori how can they find ways that they can do things that make things that matter because we're seeing too many things happening amongst ourselves when it comes to women like you know we saw our supreme justice appointee Katanji um getting her nomination and I am again a black woman in that position helping other young ladies see themselves, but noticing how qualified she was and what can we do to kind of help dismiss that. Because at the end of the day, we can't all be in our same group think and think we're going to make changes. It doesn't work that way. I like that. The other question I'd love you to answer today, because it will give something to people to think as, to think about as they walk away from the podcast, which I think is one of our prime objectives is we're keeping it short because we want you to be able to listen to it on your way to work or at the end of the day, or when you have a few minutes and we want you to go away every week thinking about something. And it may be something funny. It may be that, that um, we're challenging you to do something fun. It may be a story that we told. It may be, we may have a guest on who talks about a way to recycle that you didn't know about or um, a way to include people that you hadn't thought about. But what I'd like to hear from you, which I would think would be a good springboard for people to kind of think a little bit is if, if you had to define really in, in just a sentence or two, what your life philosophy is, sort of what drives you, what would that be? Hmm. See, that's when I feel like I should have did my homework more, (laughs) Um, but I try to be as authentic as I can. You know, when you get to a certain age, I'm finding it easier to just do. For me, my new philosophy has been an energy budget and how am I applying my energy? If things are going to drain me and not recharge me, how can I find ways to um, walk away from it and be okay with it? Um, that's been like my new philosophy. Like I'm not giving attention or light to things that do not recharge me or, you know, take away my joy and being okay with, if I set that boundary, if it happens to be with people or it happens to be with things that I set on my calendar, 
recognizing my self-care is the most important for me now. It's not about people pleasing at all. Um, that would be my my biggest thing. I tried to say prior that I'm stoic, that I want to have, and I won't say it on air, but I want to give zero and you fill in the banks because having that mentality, which is not, I don't want to say like a male bashing, but as women, we're often told how we have to always be concerned about everybody else's feelings. Meanwhile, um, that's not the things that, uh, um, um, you know, men are taught. And it's not until, you know, I'll be celebrating my birthday, uh, May 24, for instance, and I wished I had had this more of an attitude in my younger 20s be, and had it more increased because that would have given me that energy back. I wouldn't have wasted time in areas that there was some things I just wasn't going to change, you know, and I don't take um, anything for granted from my experiences, but I would say that would be my one or two sentences. <laughs> I like it. With, what were you going to say? I was just saying without me going too much on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> I think tangents are fine. Um, what I would say is that that's, again, sort of perfect for what we're doing. Because when we do the Facebook group, Bobby, every week posts a day. A day is just dedicated to self-care. There's a day that every every week, I think it's Saturday, um, every Saturday she posts something that has to do with taking care of yourself. Because if we want to create a sustainable future where everyone thrives, if we want to promote equity and justice in all its forms, we have to take care of ourselves first because if we don't, we're exhausted. And it's so easy to get frustrated and angry if you're exhausted. And yes. so I think that, that philosophy of taking care of yourself and thinking about energy and that's something I would encourage people to do is really think about where you put your energy, where you want to put your energy and how to adjust so that where you put your energy fits your morals and your beliefs. Because I think it can change the world if we do. And I think it can make us just plain tired if we don't. I so echo the sentiment. This is so exciting. So this is the first episode of our new inclusivity podcast. We are, I'm, Leah, thank you so much for joining me. I'm just so, I'm so excited that you're here. I think we can do some amazing things. This will be posted on the 24th of May, which happens to be Leah's birthday and also my mother's birthday. So that was a lovely coincidence. So that's when this will happen. After that, we'll be having weekly podcasts, 15 minute podcasts that drop sometime on Tuesdays. And so every Tuesday, we'll be introducing a new podcast. Sometimes we'll have guests. Sometimes it'll just be us. Sometimes we'll bring Dana and Bobby on with us. Um, it's going to be fun and exciting. And so if you're listening, please share this with your friends. Uh, please like us. Please follow it, us. You can hear the podcast on Anchor, but also lots of other sites, as well as watch it on YouTube. Again, our partners are Black Iowa News and Inclusive Sustainability. No, that's not right. Alliance for Sustainability, sorry. So our, our partners are Black Iowa News and Alliance for Sustainability, and we are just thrilled to have both of them with us. And our Facebook group is Inclusivity with an EA Collaborative. So please follow that as well. And I also, before we leave, want to say again, Lori, thank you for um, your energy going into wanting to have someone to collab with and for offering me the opportunity to be here as well. And I thought, hmm, a twist. We need to make sure we interview as well. Put you in my seat and learn about Lori as well. Um, I know that it's our goal is we're going to try to do all the intros we can so that people can be familiar with who we are um, as we go along in this new adventure that I am so excited about and happy for the new followers that have come along and um, would love that also that they could comment and tell us what are things they might want to hear about as well. Two, this is an interactive it's not us just bringing it. We want to hear from our community that is listening to us. Yeah, absolutely.
So thank you everybody for listening. And again, share and like and follow us and um, let's create a collaborative community that is working towards a sustainable future. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Lori.